Amherstgata Mills was settled early in the 1700s and a double sawmill was built at the head of the falls here in 1730. By the late 1700s, there was a lot of noise uh, to the then Massachusetts legislature about alewives because they weren't getting up. The dams were blocking their passage. So in 1807, the towns of Nobleboro and Newcastle built the first fish ladder. Unfortunately, we don't have any plans for those early fish ladders. So were they wood, were they stone? We just don't know. But we certainly know that by the late 1800s or maybe 1860, when the first photographs were taken, it was a stone fish ladder. And it was a kind of mix of techniques. The fish were getting up and there was lots of harvesting uh, back in those days, the 1800s. At that point, all of the alewives were food for people. It wasn't until, say, after 1950, when alewives started to uh, wane in their human appeal, uh, still they're smoked alewives, but uh, we started getting into alewives as bait. And until this day, uh, we're now harvesting for bait for lobstermen, and they're absolutely a preferred bait in the spring. In fact, we like to say the Scotta Mills alewives are some of the best because they're still in salt water when they're harvested. If we're having a good day, you know, we may get a couple hundred bushels in the course of a day. Um, the numbers in terms of what we're harvesting have been steadily going up compared to what they were before the fish ladder um, restoration happened. Our goal is to harvest as many fish as we can, but only harvest those fish that we can sell. So in other words, we don't harvest any more fish than we have for lobstermen who show up on any given day. I think that having a local source of bait is, is, is a good thing. It means that you're not um, introducing you know, things that you don't want into the Gulf of Maine by importing fish to, to, to use for bait. Um, you know, the guys don't have to go as far to get them. Things aren't being shipped in from all over the place. So I think it's a pretty important, important thing. And it's traditional too. A lot of the guys who come to get bait here have been doing it for 20, 25 years. They may have come with their fathers before that. And it's almost like a rite of spring as well. Any money that gets uh, accumulated from the harvest goes directly into refurbishing the facilities, which actually is a really good thing because our facilities have been, uh, shall we say, uh, in disrepair for some time. When I first came here, um, there was a little mix and match of different techniques used. There was nothing that was standardized. Um, there were places where the, the pools were off of the main channel. There were places where there was a concrete abutment used to try to back up the water. We were quite impressed with the number of places in the fish ladder that were collapsing in on themselves. And we originally picked the five worst places to try to, try to fix. And it became quickly apparent that the whole fish ladder really needed uh, restoration and refurbishment. We organized a neighborhood group here in Damerscotta Mills, working of course with the towns of Nobleboro and Newcastle and the Nobleboro Historical Society to start working on refurbishing the fish ladder. And we developed a very ambitious plan to uh, take the fish ladder into thirds and do a third at a time. And what you're looking at behind me now is the first third. Uh, this part was done first because it was accessible by road and we had to figure out how to get to the rest of it. And what was really amazing, we had, we had fish ladder engineers who worked with us and gave us a design, a pool and weir fishway. So what that means is we have pools of a certain dimension that are separated by weirs or transitions that rise eight to 10 inches each. And that's an optimal uh, passage for fish, for alewives in particular. And it was an amazing what a difference the first section when we finished it made. We went from getting about 80,000 fish up the fish ladder just in the first uh, redoing of the upper ladder to about 300,000 fish up. Eventually we, um, eventually we decided to take down the entire structure, build concrete walls and then face them with stone. What we learned is that the stone facing made an enormous difference for the fish. The stonework dissipates the energy of the water versus if it was just concrete, um, which makes it so that there's more places in the pools for the fish to rest if they want. The reason that the fish 
need fish passage here in Damariscotta Mills is because there is a small hydroelectric facility um, at, that occupies what was the original outlet of the lake. Um, that outlet has been occupied by, both by mills initially and then for hydroelectric power starting at the turn of the, uh, the 20th century. So um, basically there is no passage in the original passage and the fish ladder was built again in 1807. Alewives live most of their life in salt water and big schools offshore, um, Gulf of Maine, um, they may move to the south, to the north, but basically they spend the first four years of their life offshore. Then they're driven to spawn about four years of age. The alewives come up upriver and congregate in Great Salt Bay, which is you see out across the trestle there. And when the time comes, they start running up in here in big crowds. They get to the fork in the river or in the stream that's behind me and some fish go right and head up the ladder and some fish go left and head up to the middle stream and into the harvest area. They traverse the fish ladder, all 69 pools, and they head up into Damariscotta Lake and its small tributaries. There's a, a place called the Haith, which is a big marshy wetland. They go up into there, so they go up into their native spawning grounds where they spawn and then the juveniles spend some portion of time up in the lake um, before they come back down, head to the sea. Um, they may spend a little bit of time in the lower estuary before they head out to sea and there they'll grow and start the cycle again. So I consider alewives, and I don't think I'm alone in this, essentially the mice of the sea. They're at the low end of the food chain and so many species depend on them, whether it be codfish in the Gulf of Maine, um, birds and other animals in here so um, you know they're they're hugely important so we have an offshore component and then as they come in here we have um, everything from osprey and eagles that we all love to see they're all sitting here waiting for a few weeks before the fish come and it's their nesting time they're all waiting for the fish and and they're not the only ones. I mean, we talk about the raccoons, the mink. I mean, there's just a whole realm of species that are dependent on these fish coming in. And going from, say, 80,000 fish back in 2007, we're up to getting over a million every single year uh, up into Damariscotta Lake to spawn. So a pretty exciting change. We draw so much of an audience for this run. It's pretty accessible and viewable and people love to come here. It's very inspiring. There's people that come from all over the world um, and, uh, and the har they come to watch the harvest, which is kind of fun. They have no idea what they're going to see. They have no expectations. Uh, it's fun watching their faces with the different sort of emotions as they watch it going on. Kids love it. There's an educational component. We have school groups coming. Um, boy, I don't know if there's a school in the district that hasn't brought their kids over to see the fish. And uh, it's just a very inspiring piece of spring in this area. We encourage people to come and watch. Um, it, it, it's just sort of an added element of, of the, you know, the experience. And, and what I hope is, is that there's people that come here I hope they see what we're doing here in terms of getting, making it possible for a fish to get up to its spawning grounds, and I hope they go home and apply that in their own hometowns if they've got an issue like what was here. Our project isn't the only one. There's been dams removed on the Kennebec and the Penobscot and, and other places as well. There have been cul culvert replacements trying to get um, fish from having to climb up to a highly placed culvert down into one that's accessible to them. I mean, it's been a really impressive, the amount of work that's gone into alewives. I like to think that we were early in that process, but, uh, and maybe hopefully inspired a few other projects, but um, it's been a statewide um, rejuvenation of the species.